Dan Summerall. Butch Camel before the game, and I told him I was going to be on him tonight. So I guess I might as well start early with three minutes and one second left in the first. It's 17 nothing, White County over Lebanon. One of the things, Mike, that I think that helps this White County team is that all the way down into their elementary schools, they've got actually ball players who have played at the high school uh, up there and gone on to college, etc., and played, and that helps to develop a program all the way down. No question about it as we lose the basketball out. <laughs> basketball is not done overnight, Charles Gore. It starts with a building process. You gotta start with a good foundation. Rick Miller's trying to do that here at Lebanon. The girls team this year a little bit down as far as years past, as far as a lot of things are concerned and experience being the most important. Just does not have the experienced players back this year. We've had the glory of having in years past. There's one that's back, though. Mr. V. Stevenson, who always plays hard. Well, not only are we short on players, but the players we lost went over to college to play. So Exactly right. The, the quality of the player that we lost and the numbers both are kind of stacked up against us. Well, we look down there right now. We've got a, one senior on the floor, Shell Patchen. We got a freshman, excuse me, two freshmen on the floor. We got three freshmen on the floor. Correction, the senior V. Stevenson and the junior Michelle Patchen and the other three players, Charles Gore, are freshmen. Right. For the first time this year, Lebanon did not have a girls freshman basketball team. So the freshmen joined the varsity. Well, with Coach Brandon's departure and uh, late naming of principal, we didn't get a replacement in coach in time and just really didn't have a freshman coach in time to get that program going. Lebanon loses it out without a shot again. It's still 17-0, 1.50 left in the first period of play. Charles, I'm glad to be back. I understand you've done a tremendous job for the last couple of telecasts that we've had. As V. Stevenson takes the steal and goes down the floor with a good move. Get it off. Ring the roll. No good. Foul call somewhere. Good night. <laughs> It seems like the last couple of telecasts we've had have hit me at times I had to be at work. I don't know how good a job I did. It was kind of like uh, I was the only one to do it, Mike. So at least we had we <laughs> well, had a telecast. That, but I know you did a great job, and I'm glad to have you here with me tonight. Continuation ought to give her the basket. Yeah, he gave it to her. 10-11 gets the first two points of the game. As Michelle Patchen goes inside, gets it to fall, and she'll get a bonus. Patchen had a good move to the hoop that time and went up with a good shot and went in. And a shot up and good. Give it to her. Three-point play for Michelle Patchen. And Lebanon goes to the man-to-man -man defense. Full court. And that's a crazy, crazy foul by Nicole Rothschild. and Clark back into the ball game for Sparta. And in for Lebanon, number 54. And that's Nicole Whitaker. Whitaker. And she's a freshman. One of the things, Mike, that will probably help this uh, Warriorette Ball Club is we'll get on into tournament time. The regional tournament this time is going to be at White County. So they'll be playing on their home floor should they have to go against Chevrolet, Franklin County, or someone down in 9 AAA. No doubt about it. That'll certainly help this team. It'll help any team. Home floor always counts, especially when you've got a good team, and especially at tournament time. The district tournament, I'm told, I believe will be played at one of the Murfreesboro schools, probably Oakland. Nice, nice save that time by Michelle Patchen. Oh, she made a nice save. And that's V. Stevenson. No movement. No movement. Somebody's got to move. Wide open. Wide open on the inside, and they couldn't get the ball to her. That time, Whitaker had to 
had the lane, and Stevenson couldn't find her. Whoever has the ball, if they pick the dribble up, Sparta's trapping them, so uh, we're going to have to work something out on that. You give up the dribble, and you're in trouble. Homecoming 93, folks, right here at Lebanon High School. I see a lot of young folks in those ties and those corsages. Homecoming 93. We'll have the festivities between ball games tonight with a queen in her court. The seniors will be presented. It's a big, big night for senior basketball at Lebanon High School. Well, we had the position that time and still lost it out of bounds. Had two girls fight for it. Neither one of them got it. Shout at the buzzer. <clears throat> Ball short, no good. That brings to a close the first period of play. The ball game, 17-3. Sparta leads Lebanon. All right, possession there to Sparta. They'll start off the second period of play, leading 17-3. White County has substituted a couple of players in, but they're starting back with their opening lineup here in the second quarter. Yes, sir, Ray, give it out. Sparta knocked it out. Lebanon's going to play it. This is the point of interest, Mike, on this White County team. Uh, number 14 and number 20 for White County are first cousins. Their mothers are identical twins and played basketball for the Warrior Ants back about the time I was in high school. How about that? That is a little trivia. And I'll tell you, the boys coach for Sparta has some ties here in Lebanon. Mr. Roy Sewell, I understand, has a sister who lives here in Lebanon. Yeah, his sister's Ruth Payne at uh, exactly right. the Diet Center, I guess it is. I'm sorry, I should have called her by name. I'm sorry, Ruth. Exactly right. I saw them talking uh, before the game and went over and spoke to uh, Coach Sewell and Ruth, and she was telling me that that was her brother, so. It's a good thing she identified herself because uh, Raymond Laster was kind of giving her a hard time for sitting over on the Sparta side, so <laughs> she's got a reason to be sitting over there a little bit. Well, she's probably from Sparta in that he is, so I assume she probably grew up in Sparta as well. Foul going to be called in whistle on number 22, and that's Andrea Baldwin. Lebanon's basketball is going to be facing the press and a trap. And Reader dribbles out of it. She should have crossed the center line just to lose it. Oh, me. Nice dish. Oh, what a nice dish. Left-handed shot by number 14, Kelly Jolly. Nice shot, Kelly Jolly. Another loss and another dish and another basket. It's 21-3. Kelly Jolly's dad played uh, basketball for Tennessee Tech back in the 60s, so she's got uh, basketball in her blood. Charles Gore, how is it you know so much about this Sparta team tonight? I'm from Sparta also. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these kids playing out there are the children of people I went to high school with, so I know a little bit more All right. trivia about well, this team than to do others. We're even more glad to have you up here tonight then. You can see the difference right now in this Sparta team. When they get into trouble, they know how to get out of it. Well, well coached, with a lot of experience, a lot of depth in this Sparta program. Coach, Coach Keith Short uh, developed a good program up there, and now Mike uh, Shockley, I believe it is, is carrying on that tradition. And uh, Coach Short moved on down to Riverdale Girls, and you can see that their program's coming back this time. Kelly Jolly with another easy basket. And time out on the floor as Lebanon wants to talk about it. That's a big run right there for Sparta. Six point run. It's 551 left in the second period of play. It's 23-3. All right, folks. 23 to 3, 550 left in the half of this girls' action. And we got the number two team in the state, the Sparta. The Lady Warriors uh, leading Lebanon. 23 to 3. Ah, oh, that was a foul, but we didn't get whistled for it. Thank you, Butch. Hello, three point shot. B. Stevenson with a rebound. And that was number 20 with a shot, Cara Sims. We got a foul on number 14, Kelly Jolly. 
Barta whistle for the foul. That pass has got to be crisper, Charles Gore. We've got to learn to make that pass a little crisper. Telegraph that pass and defense will be able to get back to it. Give it out to White. 5-12 left in the half, 23-3. Sparta with a 20-point lead. White County slightly has the size on us, but they've got a lot of quickness to go with their size, too. They're not, uh, they're able to move out there on that court. Good move, V. Good move, V. Stevenson. Up in the end. No, missed it. Summerall works for the hard for the rebound. It'll be Lebanon's basketball as they jump it up. Summerall, one of our freshmen, did a good job of going up for that board that time. In talking last night, or excuse me, this, is, this evening to Coach Rick Miller, Summerall has made a lot of improvements for this team. That's why she's on the floor. She's worked hard. She's on a lot of pro progress in, girl, in this basketball, and that's why she's getting a chance to play. When you're young, when you're inexperienced, that's what makes the difference in your playing time. How much do you want it? How hard do you want to give? Sumrall is, I believe, her name, as I have been corrected. Sumrall, excuse me. Well, she gives the team a lot of height, too, out there, and that, that's something that we have been down on a little bit. Lindsay Sumrall. I'll get that name correct. I'm glad I've got these folks up here. Mom and Dad will be glad of that. Exactly right. And I do apologize. Country boy come to town sometimes can't spell himself. Well, our so. production staff doesn't write too good either. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Like I said, a country boy come to town, he can't even read his own name, much less that of others. Nice basket inside. 25-3. Nice inside, and summer oh, with a basket. Move. It was a good, good move. 25-5, brought up by 20. She walks. Oh, we got a foul call right here on uh, Nicole Rocher. I believe she walked. Looked like a step. That's a great move with summer L that time. It, that'll do uh, serve really good. Summer L, okay. <laughs> Well, she can learn if she can make that kind of move against this ball club, she can do it against any of them, and that'll really do well as we head towards the tournament. 25-5. Good rebound that time. Lebanon went up high. Michelle Patchen took it off, and she brought it down and dished it off to Ross Shirt, and we're down the floor inside the paint. Good quick hands by this Sparta team. Good quick, quick hands by this Sparta team. Those passes have got to be sharp and succinct in order to get by this defense. She did. She did. She picked that foot up. She had to take a step. 3.49 left in the half, folks. It's 25-5 as this experience Sparta team is beating up on this young, inexperienced Lebanon team. Folks, in two years, I think you'll see the difference. Rick Miller building a good program. He did so at Hartsville, and he's going to do it again at Lebanon. Takes time. Nice steal, V. Stevenson. Oh, and took it and dribbled. Kept the basketball. Coast to coast and should have ditched it. Maybe, maybe set it up. She tried to take it all the way after making a great play. And missed the shot. Good shot up there by number 44, Amber Clark. Charles Gore, they know where they're going to be. That pass came before the girl ever got there. As she came down the floor, anticipating her to be in that spot, she was there and, my, and got the shot to fall. That's her heart. Where these 14. kids playing, having played together with the same type program over the years, they're going to know where each other is going to be. Whistle that time for her. traveling. It's 27 5 with three minutes left in the half. Nice shot that time. Baldwin goes up and takes it off the glass for an easy two shot, two points. 